autoimmune condition, my mum's also 76 on top of having the conditions that took her at risk. And, um, and so I had to go out, uh, you know, I'm, I'm at risk of getting killed with coronavirus, but I'm also at risk of my sister killing me, you know, putting my mum you know, at risk too, you know, but so that, that was very, very difficult. And in the end, I ended up having to um, think, oh gosh, what am I going to do? And there's a church nearby. And um, so thanks very much to Father John Eagers who passed the message on to Maureen. Um, from St James's and St Columbus Church who kindly went and got my prescriptions for me. And she some other experiences on this as well uh, Frank's been in touch I've not received any communication from NHS Scotland to confirm I'm on the shielded list of rare kidney disease to fight the disease I'm on a range of medicine and um, blood thinner tablets I'm 71 really worried about the future another one here um, I'm still waiting for the letter of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma advised by consultant I am in the high risk category shielding's a new term a bit confusing just husband and myself in the household can he do the shopping Sandesh the these letters, some people have had them, but some people still waiting for them at the moment. It's a kind of complex picture, isn't it? The, the best advice would be to speak to your GP in the first instance if you haven't had the letter, but you're wondering if you're included. Well, it's very difficult because if anyone who has health problems calls their GPs, we simply wouldn't be able to cope with that volume and demand of, of, of patient access. Um, the, the people who are shielding are there's only 1.5 million people in the country that will be shielding um, and it's because they are at, at more than high risk so not every autoimmune condition will be somebody who needs to be shielded in the same way that a rare kidney disease won't be shielded uh, or potentially non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. There's, there's no guarantee that, that you would fall within the shielding category um, and it, so it's about how bad your immune system is and how much we are suppressing them. Um, they are very complex um, reasons and it's not unfortunately straightforward. What, what I would definitely encourage people is um, they need to definitely be socially isolating, wait for these letters to arrive because they should, should have been hitting the doormat um, at this stage, but as we all know, that every, everything has taken longer. Um, if you receive one of these letters, it's 12 weeks in social 
shielding is different to socially isolating. When you're shielding, you it, it is literally that word. You need to stop all contact with people. You need to put yourself away, literally shield yourself. Um, because if you potentially have contact with somebody who has coronavirus, uh, you are at big risk. So if in doubt on this, here we are on Friday, the letter should be there with you by Sunday. If in doubt, do it right now and wait for the letter. Better to be safe than to be sorry on this. It is. It is, it is definitely better to be safe than to be sorry. If you, if you think that you are falling within uh, the category where you are having a lot of steroids or drugs which involve your immune system going down, or you've had uh, an organ transplant, um, or you're pregnant with heart issues, um, these are the people, or cancers, the specific cancers, um, these are the people that, that we need to know about. Um, we have been asked as a group of doctors to look through our list and try and find these people who might have slipped through the cracks um, to then highlight us to say, look, these are the people that we, we think need to be shielded as well. Um, so we are definitely doing our bit uh, as well, along with the government doing, uh, doing it. And just specifically on that that issue there of the person who got in touch with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, advised by a consultant, they are high risk. Can their husband uh, pop out to do the shopping? Is it okay for that to happen in the household, or does the whole household have to be in lockdown? So the person who's got the non-Hodgkin's needs to be away and shielded. Uh, and the ideal situation is the house wouldn't go out. Um, because that would be the most protective. But we've got to be, we've got to be pragmatic about it. If, you, if you've got somebody's got to go out to get the shopping, if there's no support, if there's nobody else that can do things for you. So in cases like that, uh, what you really want to do is try and minimise the contact you have with your husband. Try and distance yourself. So you're at least two metres away. Try not to share the same facilities. Try not to uh, share the same bathroom. Um, and for the guys out there, it's really important if you go to the toilet, you need to put the toilet seat down um, because coronavirus will be found in our feces and it can spread around your bathroom in that way. Um, it, it, is, it is a terrible burden that we're asking people to do, um, to shield yourself. And it's really going to be distressing. Um, mental health is going